اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد صلاة وسلاما دائمين متلازمين متلازمين الى يوم الدين اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار I praise and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see his forgiveness and guidance and his assistance. And we take refuge with them from the evil, evil within our souls and from the consequence of our misdeeds. Whoever Allah gives guidance to, none can mislead, and whoever he misleads, none can guide. I bear witness that there's nothing and no one worthy of worship besides Allah, Lord of all the worlds, creator of everything. He has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, is his servant and messenger. We gratefully we ask Allah to grant him peace, and mercy, and to extend to him our salutations on this blessed day during this blessed month. This has been asked him to grant peace to his family, companions, and everyone who follows the witness and exhibits goodwill into the meeting and the reckoning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, once again, the month of Hajj, or the season of Hajj among us, is upon us. And our Prophet, Islam, he initiated two special celebrations during his lifetime. So of course, we know that there's many things to celebrate but with regard to the types of holidays that we attribute to Islam directly, that there are two, and those are three of Fitr, which ends at Ramadan, once Ramadan is complete, once we conclude our fast, and then the Eid of al Abha, Eid al Abha, the Eid of the Sacrifice, which is the upcoming, the forthcoming celebration or sacrifice, which commemorates the um, struggles of Ibrahim Salam, Abraham and his son. Uh, the month of Ramadan, you know, is commemorating the revelation of the Quran uh, and also celebrating the accomplishment of Muslims when we complete our fast. Uh, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Sorry, you want people to move up? I'm sorry. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, <laughs> Indeed, the very first house which was erected for God is the one at Bakka, which is an ancient word or name for Mecca. A source of blessing and guidance for all people. Therein are clear signs or miracles, the station of Abraham. So whoever enters therein is safe and secure. And people owe to God that they visit the house. Those who are able or capable of doing so. But those who show me gratitude, then Allah he has no need for any creature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need for anything. This is what we learn in the Quran. We also learn in the Quran that it was Ibrahim and his son Ismail who erect the foundations or they lift up the foundation of the house. But if Yafa'u Ibrahim al Qawaid al Nadeti wa Ismail. And when Ibrahim or Abraham, he lifts up or erects 
the foundations of the house along with Ismail. The Hajj itself is largely about commemorating Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim. Uh, commemorates Hajjah, the Sa'i between Safa and Marwa, the days of Mina, commemorating the sacrifice, among other things. The Kaaba itself, visiting the Kaaba, commemorating Ibrahim and Ismail, who actually bring out or elevate or lift up the foundations of the house. Now, these are things that most of us would know. But I do think it's important to speak about what is so special about Abraham, Salam. What is so special about Abraham? Because we already know that Ibrahim, he is referred to as Abu Amdiya, the father of the prophets. All, every prophet or messenger that came after Abraham was from among, among his prophets including Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, alayhi salam, ajma'i, that he was the father of all of them. We know this about Abraham. We ourselves, we pray for Ibrahim, alayhi salam, and his family. In every, every prayer that we make, every time we perform the salah, when we do the shakr, Allahumma, and we do salat Ibrahimiyya, Allahumma suri ala Muhammad, wa ala ala Muhammad, kama salli ta'ala, Ibrahim, ma'ala ali Ibrahim. We pray for him all, all the time. And we ask Allah to grant blessing and, and give peace to Muhammad and the family of Muhammad in the same way that he has given it to Abraham and the family of Abraham. Meaning that Abraham and his family already have it. And we want Allah to ensure that Muhammad and his family will also continue to have it. So, what is special about Ibrahim salam? In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says of Ibrahim, in Surah Al-Baqarah, he says, وَإِذْ جَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَلْمَهُمْ And mention of Muhammad, or remember, when your Lord, he tried Abraham with words, and he fulfilled them, or with commandments, and he fulfilled them. قَالَ إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامًا God said to him, I shall make you an exemplar for all humanity. Qala wa mizurriyati, Abraham responded, will you do the same for my progeny? Allah said, la yanal ahdi awwalihi. My covenant does not apply to the wrongdoers. It does not apply prior to the tyrants, to the oppressors. As if to say that, yes, it will apply to your progeny but not all of them. Some of them will be oppressors. Some of them will not act right. But others will. And so those who fulfill my commandments for the commandments, as you have, then they also will benefit from this covenant. And so every single messenger that come after Ibrahim were among his progeny. Were among his progeny. Now the scholars, they differ about what exactly is meant by these words that Abraham fulfilled, or the Kedimahs? And the Kedimahs in the Quran, there are two types of the words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of in the Quran, and we, we usually translate as words. And so some say one type of, of Kedimahs are referred to as the of Qadabiyya, the ontological words of God. That is to say, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his decree, that his decision to will certain things into existence or to allow certain things to exist, that these are from Allah's heaven. I refer to them as Allah's word because things happen by God by simply him saying, kun fayakun. He says, be and they become. They happen. Kalimat al Another type of kalimat are called a kalimat al which we can translate as the deontological words of God. That is to say, these are words that where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is expecting or prescribing something for His creation, in a particular humanity. So in the Quran, Allah says in certain places, 
things such like as wa tamma kalimatu rabbi la la wa tamma kalimatu rabbi la amla anna jahannama min al-jinnati wa nas ajma'in and the word of god has been perfected that i shall indeed fill up hell with the jinn and mankind all together this is what we call the ontological words of god but in other places allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say things such as but tamma kalimatu rabbika sidqan wa adla and the words of your lord have been perfected in truth and in justice that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he speaks the truth and he decrees decrees and he prescribes and forbids that he is being just as well and so what were these words that ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam had fulfilled they differ about this some of them say that it was a reference to the rights of hajj and manasik the rights of the hajj itself making tawaf around the kaaba walking between safa and marwa seven times going to mina and stoning the jamarats uh doing tawaf with your father slaughtering the ram among other things something this is what is a reference So if Ibrahim did, did that, he fulfilled it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of that, he said, إِنِّي جَعِلُ لَنِ النَّاسِ إِمَامًا I'm going to make you a, a leader, a, an imam, an exemplar for other people, for all humanity. Others say, rather no, the kalimats are reference to tahara. That there are aspects of cleanliness that God has prescribed for Abraham that he fulfilled. Some of them relate to the head and others other parts of the body so for instance that Ibrahim was he was told to make ablutions that he should rinse his nose and he should brush wash his mouth that he should brush his teeth right regularly that he should trim his mustache especially the part over the lips so that when he eats that the hair doesn't go into your mouth right um that 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 but, but there are other things to do that he should shave his under armpits that he should shave his pubic hairs right do things like this which relate to general cleanliness and god took him to circumcise himself that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him these things he fulfilled them and because of it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the jahil of the nasi imam i shall make you an exemplar for all humanity a third opinion is that the kalimat are reference to al-islam in general submission surrender all the signs of true surrender and so these signs are about 30 different signs and they pertain to certain actions which are connected with the description of the believers in the quran so for instance you find in surah at-tawbah also called bara'a In one verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says at-ta'ibun al-'abidun al-hamidun as-sa'ihun as-raqibun as-sa'idun al-amirun bil-ma'ruf wan-nahun 'anil munkar wal-haqidun bi hukmillah Then he says that one at-ta'ibun those who repent So one of his characteristics one of the characteristics of Ibrahim was he was one who repented to return to God When he thought he did something wrong, he returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking his forgiveness. Al-Abidun. He was a devotee. He was a worshiper of God. He served his Lord, which is another characteristic. Al-Abidun. He praised his Lord. He showed him gratitude. Right? That he was as-sa'ihun. From the sa'ihin. Which some interpreted as being as among those who fasted regularly. As-sa'ihun. Al-raqi'un. Those who bow the body. Was-sa'jidun. Those who prostrate to God. Al-aminun of al-ma'un. Those who enjoy good. Wal-nahuna al-munkar. Those who commit wrong. Wal-haqiruna al-hudulillah. And those who keep or keep, they guard the boundaries of God. They guard the boundaries of God. But meaning they don't transgress the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you read the Quran, and this is a, a side note, that if you really want to know what aspects of Islam are non-negotiable and those which are, uh, are, are negotiable, 
that all you have to do is, is when you find all of the injunctions listed, if there's a verse that comes after it and says, Simply Allah, those are the limits of God. For that to do to not transgress them, then that's one clear sign that these are non-negotiables in the Quran. So at any rate, so these are some of the characteristics of Islam. And then in Surat Al-Mu'minun, Al-Mu'minun, the believers have succeeded. Those who are humble in their prayers. So Ibrahim was humble in his prayer. He said that Ibrahim he used to pray four rakahs per day. That was his sharia. Four units of prayer per day. And when he did, he was khashi, that he was like humble and focused in his prayer. Those who turn aside from empty conversation. That, that he hear people speaking useless talk, he turned away. He just walked away from them. Those who offer pay, pay charity, they regularly, they Pray, uh, pay charity for they are involved in the process of personal purification, spiritual uh, um, discipline. And those who guard their private parts, right? And those, except with regard to those who are there legally married, among others, and then. Uh, Anything beyond that, then it is considered to be a violation. At any rate, the verses continue. So you look at these verses in Surah al You look at similar verses in Surah al maarij and you find um, these descriptions. And in Surah Al-Ahzab, Inna Muslimin, Inna Muslimat, Inna Muslimin, Inna Muslimat, 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 the truthful, the patient, the, the those of your charity, among all these descriptions. So Ibrahim, he encompassed all of them. He encompassed all of them. And one verse in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Ibrahim, in the Ibrahim, that Ibrahim was an ummah. Ibrahim, he was a nation. A devout nation. To God, devout to God, Hanifa. And he was an individual who naturally inclined away from idolatry. He inclined away from idolatry. So this is why we find in the stories in the Quran, the story in the Quran about Ibrahim, he looked at the, the, the star and he saw, saw it, it disappear. He said, after saying that this is my Lord, and then it disappeared, he said, no, that, that it can't be my Lord. And then he saw the moon and he said, how about up be? This is my Lord. And then once it set or disappeared, the same thing. He said, if my Lord does not guide me, then I will, I will be lost among those who are lost. And once he saw the sun, he said, This is my Lord. This is the greatest, the biggest of all of them. And once it said as well, he said, I turn my face in the direction of the one who originated the heavens and the earth. Hanifa. So, so this Ibrahim was a Hanif. That Ibrahim was neither a Jew nor a Christian. Rather, he was a Hadith. And he was not a, a, a living Hadith. Nor and he was not among the idolaters. This is what the Quran teaches about Ibrahim. But then a, a, a final opinion on this issue. What does it mean? What are these Kenyans? What are these words that Ibrahim fulfilled? And of course, it is possible to say that Ibrahim fulfilled all of these things. That Ibrahim, he fulfilled the rights of the Hajj. Ibrahim, alayhi salam, that he fulfilled the obligations of general cleanliness of Bahar. That Ibrahim, alayhi salam, that he was characterized by all of these things described in Surah al Bara'a, in Surah al Ma'arij, in Surah al Hazab. Uh, and, uh, and so, so he was described by all of these different things. But also it is said that the, the words or these commandments that he was expected to carry out related to one when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to leave his people after they attempted to kill him in the fire. It was also when Ibrahim stood up and he debated with the 
tired of his time. Nimrod. And he, and he outwitted him and exposed himself to being killed himself. It also was with regard to Ibrahim's endurance in the face of being cast into the fire by his people, which included his father, because of destroying and breaking their idols. It also was because it also was something related to when God had told him to um, to to act uh, to entertain guests when they came to his home. So it was an obligation for him to do so. He entertained them as in the story of when the angels came when they came to destroy the uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. They came to uh, they passed by Ibrahim's house prior to that. And Ibrahim Aisalam, he entertained them as if they were human guests. And it also, and most importantly, related to Ibrahim being tested with his son. And one, once his son had reached an age where he can go and help and be with his father and walk with his father, he said to him, My dear son, I saw in the dream that I am slaughtering you. What do you think? And because the dreams of the prophets are real. So if he dreamt it, it is a commandment from God to slaughter, to kill his son. What did Ismail do? What did he say? He said, Daddy, do whatever you've been ordered to do. So take you to me, Allah, and the And you will find that I'll be among those who are patient. And alhamdulillah, we know that because of their surrender, that Allah has spared his son and gave them in place of that Iran. But at any rate, this is the season of Hajj. And many of us have already left, and some of us will be leaving very soon. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make a journey of immense benefit, make a, a journey of deep reflection, not only seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the performance of that ritual, but also by reflecting upon the lives of the great people that we are commemorating when we perform the Hajj, such as Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ismail alayhi salam, and his wife and the wife of Ibrahim, Hagar, Rajala Anha, of Akul Bodi Hadi wa Sakullah Hari, wa Kumari, wa Risha Kuzmi wa Muslims. Before closing, I just wanted to offer an additional reflection. And that reflection um, relates to the very fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sometimes chooses people for certain things. That we live in a context today, a culture which constantly is attempting to break down the divisions, or class divisions, or we can say sort of the social hierarchy, a society which is becoming much more hostile to aspects of hierarchy. Our religion does not grant special privilege or I feel like there's no special spiritual privilege to people in that people will not simply go to heaven because of who they're related to. This is why we find in the verse when, uh, when Abraham asked God, would he also make his children exemplars for humanity? He said, not you know what I mean, that my covenant does not apply to the wrongdoers. Which means that, which means that your blood ties mean nothing at the end of the day. However, social privilege has been afforded to certain people, but it also exists according to Quranic teaching spiritual hierarchies. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes he chooses people to occupy those offices or those positions. Allah does what is called that he chooses 
certain things, certain people. In the Allah is sucking their malaikat the rusul and the nas. That Allah He chooses, selects from the angels uh, uh, as messengers, as, as well as from among people. That Allah He chooses them. Sometimes because perhaps He sees some good in them or in their future, or it's simply that it's a gratuitous thing that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala just simply does so. And there is a, an aspect of spiritual hierarchy that we have to acknowledge. That no one can ever become a prophet. No one can ever become a prophet. As Ibrahim Nakhani would say, وَلَنْتَكُمْ نُبُوَّةٌ مُمْتَسَبًا وَلَوْ رَعْ قَاطِرْ خَيْرِ عَلَىٰ أَخَبًا That prophethood cannot be acquired regardless of how significant your strivings may be when it comes to spiritual discipline, you won't become a prophet in any fashion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he chooses his people. And in one narration attributed was considered to be a hadith qudsi, even though it's a bit disputed, but related by Ibn Taymiyyah in one of his books. Um, he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Ibrahim, Ya Ibrahim, لما تخط أرأيت لما تخط فخليلا سأوبرهين Do you know why I chose you as my friend? How do you make me make you my friend? And he responded, or he said to him, he said, لأني رأيت أن الأطاء أحب إليك من الأخذ. So because I noticed that you, I noticed that with you giving is more beloved to you than taking. Giving is more beloved to you than taking. This is why I chose you as my khalid. But there is this situation, spiritual hierarchies. There's the idea of a fadl. Some people have been married over others. That Allah creates certain human beings with certain physical capacities that others don't have. Right? And, it, and, and which, which does so because certain people, those type of people, are fit for certain types of tasks and others are not fit for this type of task. Women are fit for certain type of tasks that men are not. Men are fit for certain type of tasks that women are not. Right? That we find natural problems and also because social problems of marriage as well. But ultimately, when we look at stories like the story of Ibrahim and his family, that we need to reflect upon um, them and see them as the standard or a standard to strive for. And Usla. The word Usla is mentioned in the Quran, Quran only three times. Two times in relation to Ibrahim and his people. Only once, if once is in relation to Muhammad Salam. Right? And so their example is one to follow. Their example of being committed to the relationship between themselves and their creator. That they're very committed to it. To their commitment between themselves and their creator. That Allah has to be put first before everything. For everything, for everyone, Allah comes first. And we we struggle, we try our best to never compromise that relationship. Right? We never compromise. And when we, when we fall short, we we seek Allah's forgiveness. And we try to reform our behavior. And I think that those are some of the, the takeaways or the things that we can uh, reflect upon in addition to in addition to what we've already heard, inshaAllah. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. That he guide us, that he grant us assistance, that he allow for us to become more Abrahamic in our way of living, which also means becoming more Muhammadan in our way of living. Because the Quran tells us that in the home the Nasi Ibrahima that the those who are at most or most deserving of Abraham are those who follow him. And this prophet and those who believe Allah with them. This is what Allah tells us. So may Allah make us from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah that he, 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 he um, grant a safe journey and return to the Hajjaj. That he uh, help them to focus in their, in their rights and to forgive them sins and bring them back to this place, back to home and to their families. Uh, as people who are in the state similar to, similar to as they were first born, that is without sin. We also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He grant forgiveness and mercy.
to all of those believers who have passed recently, uh, including the um, brother of our dear brother, um, Brother Tawfiq Hamdi, who is the brother of uh, Walid Hamdi, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant mercy to him and all the grant from Jannah, inshaAllah, is along with everyone else who may or may be unaware of, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them and make their graves gardens of paradise and not piss of hellfire, inshaAllah. Inna Allahu malaika tuhu salluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu tasima. Allahumma izzat al-sallam al-sallim. Allahumma izzat al-sallam al-sallim. Wa adhidna al-shirk al-musikim. Rabbana tafakbal minna inna kahanti sallim. Wa zwa alayna inna kahanti tawwab al-rahim. Allahumma fil bin muslimin wa muslimat. Wa al-mu'minin wa mu'minat. Al-ahdaati minhum wa al-amwat. Wa al-fukrna Allahumma wa ahma'ahum. Wa fadhi al-ihsani ya ahma al-rahmin. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما بارك على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم إنا نسلك الجنة وما يقرب إليها من قول ما عمل ولا يوذك من النار وما يقرب إليها من قول ما عمل ربنا أجنا من يوك رحمة وحيثنا من أمرنا رشدا ربنا أجنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفي العذاب النار وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه الاخيار وسلم تسليما كثيرا وسبحان ربنا رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله